My name is Dr. Mark Kieran. I'm Director of Pediatric Neuro-Oncology at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston Children's Hospital at Harvard Medical School in Boston, uh, USA. So pediatric brain tumors are, in fact, a global problem. Um, we now know that the tumors are not caused by most environmental uh, factors. It really appears that the tumors are just spontaneous mutations, which means that they affect every population everywhere in the world to approximately the same extent. It means that any child is at risk, and although they're rare, um, there's nothing the parent can do to cause their child getting a brain tumor, and there's nothing they can do to prevent it. It appears to just be a random mutation. There is a small percentage of tumors that can be genetically related. So the first thing we do when we see a new child with a brain tumor is make sure that there is no genetic association. But other than that, it just turns out to be a random process that can't be predicted. It's like being hit by lightning. Sometimes it just happens. Brain tumors, in fact, cancer in general, is typically much more common in boys. That's always been true. Um, so uh, we see the same thing in brain tumors. Uh, we see brain tumors more often in boys, uh, but in terms of the actual treatment, they tend to respond as well. So once we start treating them, the sex differentiation doesn't make so much of a difference. Um, most brain tumors, there are some brain tumors that are very common in infants and in young children. There are other brain tumors that are much more common only in adolescence and early adulthood. So the types of tumors that kids get changes by their age. Uh, but again, once they get them, they tend to be a random event. Pediatric brain tumors are not related to how wealthy you are, whether you live in the country or in the city, in a rich country, a, a poor country, vegetarian, meat-eating, smoking, drinking. Um, again, the incidence of pediatric brain tumors is pretty well the same all over the world, including rich and poor, industrial, urban, rural, those kinds of things. And what that tells us is that those kinds of factors are not what determine who gets a brain tumor. Again, it appears for the most part just to be a random event that's not predictable. This is an exciting time in pediatric brain tumors. In fact, over the last 10 years, we've probably made more progress in the understanding and treatment of brain tumors than we did in the prior 50. Uh, we now understand, for example, many of the mutations, the random mutations that started the cancer, and because we can now identify those, we can also make drugs against them, which means now instead of just using toxic radiation and chemotherapy to treat your child's tumor, we can actually go in with these new drugs and actually go in and attack specifically the mutation. That tends to make the therapies both more effective and much less toxic. Uh, and it, we're starting to be able to move away from the radiation and chemotherapy that was really the foundation of the treatment of not just brain tumors, but in fact all tumors uh, for the last 50 years. Personalized medicine is this concept of if instead of just using non-specific ways of attacking a tumor like radiation and chemotherapy that don't, can't tell the difference between a normal cell and a tumor cell, they just attack anything that looks like it's dividing, whether it's normal or not. And that's why there's so many side effects to radiation and chemotherapy. In personalized medicine, once you've understood or discovered what the mutation is causing your specific tumor, you can develop a drug against just that mutation, which means when you give the drug, you go in and you kill just the tumor cells, you don't damage the normal cells around it. And that concept of personalized medicine suggests that not only will we increase the efficacy of therapy, we'll significantly decrease the toxicity, and that's obviously important for patients. We've made enormous uh, gains in our understanding and treatment of pediatric brain tumors. Currently, about 65% of all children with brain tumors are now cured of their disease for the rest of their life, but that means 35% of kids are not cured. And obviously, until we reach 100%, we're not going to be satisfied with the number. So we have got to improve the outcome for that last 35%. The other issue that's absolutely critical is Unlike other parts of your body, your brain is really what makes you who you are. And so, for example, if you have a kidney tumor, the surgeon can go in and just cut out one of your kidneys, you've got another kidney. When you've got a brain tumor, the surgeon can't just go in and cut out half of your brain, you wouldn't be able to function normally at all that way. So it's much harder to be effective when you have a brain tumor because not only do you have to treat the brain tumor, you have to protect all of the remaining brain. And obviously that balance is much more complicated than most tumors of the body. 
we are beginning to learn of new ways of doing that. One of them, for example, are the targeted drugs where because they're much more specific, they don't do as much damage to the normal parts of the brain as do radiation and chemotherapy. I have the advantage of being both a clinical physician so that I get to see the patients in the clinic every day and understand what's happening with their disease. But I also have the advantage of being in a, a researcher as part of a research lab where we're actually understanding the mutations and developing the therapies, the personalized therapies that will actually help patients. And the ability to bring those two is of course enormous opportunity because it allows us to directly impact the outcome of these patients. Metronomic therapy is not so much a new concept, although for the first time we're really beginning to understand it. And it really talks about the development of drugs that A, have much less toxicity, are much easier to give than traditional therapy, and instead of just attacking the tumor cells, like the personalized or targeted therapies do, like radiation and chemo, these more attack the environment that the tumor is trying to go, grow in, on the understanding that if you make the environment hospitable for the tumor, the tumor will have trouble growing. If you kind of think about being a seed growing in a rich, rich lush forest, obviously that seed can grow very rapidly. If you take that same seed and you plant it in the middle of the desert, now suddenly it can't grow very well. And the goal of metronomic therapy is to really change the environment more like a desert, so even when the tumor is trying to grow, it's not able. I think the opportunity for therapy for uh, not just pediatric brain cancer, but brain cancer in adults, and in fact tumors in general, this is an incredibly exciting time that for the first time we're really beginning to understand the biology of the tumors, we're developing the right drugs, and as I said, the advances we've made in the last 10 years have been remarkable. The advances we're gonna make in the next 10 years I think are gonna be even more remarkable. There's never a good time to get a tumor, but if you were going to get a tumor, today is much better than it was 10 years ago, and I think you will be, I think you will be amazed at what we're gonna be doing 10 years from now.